Uh, okay. The first step is here. So I didn't bother with uh, a proper video. I've got a bunch of screenshots and a lot of talking, but here's what we have. Uh, we will show how to install OKD for GCP using IVI flow. Uh, show a few known issues and take a quick peek on what the installer is actually doing. Uh, UPI flow should be pretty different because you have to set up things uh, yourself. And in our case, we want to take care, we want the installer to take care of, of that. So uh, here's the install config template I'm using. Um, there is not much different from other providers, actually. Uh, the difference is, of course, platform GCP, your project ID, and the region you're using. The rest is pretty much the same. Um, I'm using, it's in fact, Jinja template, because I'm templating those uh, using Ansible and create clusters on demand. Um, I wrote my own wrapper around the installer where I can do make GCP or make AWS, and I have multiple clusters running outside. Uh, note that it's not designed to, to keep a long-term cluster living. It's just to quickly spin them up and destroy. So uh, I just run make GCP, and it, and it does the thing. Um, and here is the link to that. You can dig into my terrible skills and make files later. So what it does, in fact, it pulls uh, the latest installer. Uh, we're pulling from origin for the four installer. And uh, we're verifying that it's the correct version and the release image matches the, the desired one. Next. What it would do, it would template an install config from GCP template and uses the base domain for our GCP account. Uh, it's literally calling an, uh, an Ansible command and templates it. We are also copying to a, a temporary folder for my file, uh, from, for my cluster, and we're saving a copy because the installer uh, consumes the install config.yaml. Uh, later on, this huge terrible command, uh, which starts the installer from the, the image we have just pulled. So we're passing it. Wait, I have a bit of line. Uh, first of all, we mount the folder with our cluster because um, you can have different ones running meanwhile. And we're making the installer output to this particular directory. Next, we mount the Google credentials. And finally, we, we run uh, create cluster command because the entry point in this image is uh, OpenShift installer. We also override the release image um just to be sure and currently you have to override the image used by the installer which points to our local copy of uh, fedora core os uh, here's the output from the installer and things start running basically uh, it notifies us that the os image has been overridden and uh, so is the release image but that's what we expect so after about five to 10 minutes to create the necessary resources, we would see that images in our console started creating and uh, the bootstrap image got assigned an external IP. So if we SSH that IP, we would see that initial Fedora Core OS image has been uh, has started and uh, there is a bootcube service there, which does all of the jobs, and we can watch it using journal uh, CTL command. So the first thing uh, bootcube service would do is to upgrade us to the latest image from our um, release payload. It would 
extract the machine OS content, pull it, and apply it as an OS3 content, and then finally reboot. So after the reboot, we would see that the DoraCores version has changed the latest, the one in, in 6th of March when I run this, and BootCube service continues. That's basically a huge difference from Arcos, where uh, the initial image does not pivot into itself. So uh, during the process, you can, on the bootstrap node, you can already export the cube config from this directory and slash up to OpenShift and start watching uh, what's happening in the cluster once it assembles uh, the API service. Oh, well, this is pretty small. It should gonna work. Uh, sweet. So first thing we see is that the version of it like this. <laughs> That's much better. Can you can you all see that? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Fine, at least on. Yep. Great. Uh, so what we see here is that the first operator called version, it's a cluster version operator, started progressing, and it has started um, the network operator, and it's also progressing. This is why three of our masters are not yet ready. So network configuration has been installed in them, and we have tons of pods hanging and pending because nodes are not yet ready. Don't have to do that all the time, eh? Like this. And when finally network is installed, those masters are reporting that they are ready yet. And other operators like machine config started progressing. Pods are in creating state and so on. So the difference from UPI flow here is that there are no workers yet. They physically don't exist. Um, that's expected because we use machine API to create them dynamically. We define three machine sets, each of them in different uh, availability zone, and we want one machine in each. And after some time, when machine API operator starts progressing, it would create machines. They would get uh, status provisioning. Um, that one is not yet uh, probably processed, but later we would see that new workers have started appearing in our GCP console. And eventually, network configuration would be installed in them. Necessary files would be copied. They would become ready. And more operators would start their progress. Um, the most critical ones is, of course, authentication and um, Cube API server, basically. Uh, there are lots of crash loop backups, the great operators yet. That's pretty much expected because um, authentication has not yet created all the necessary certificates and so on. But in the end, yeah. in the end, we would see that install has completed. Um, the OM killed um, pods are irre irrelevant. It's actually a bug and should be fixed. All machines are ready, and uh, we're done. We can run OC status. And uh, yep, pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, two known issues, again, you would have to use the OpenShift install OS image override because it's not yet uploaded. Once it's done, we will update the installer to point to correct location. And in my case, bootstrapping never actually completed. Uh, rather, it did complete, but OpenShift installer on my site never noticed that and never ask to destroy the bootstrap node. I'm pretty sure the problem is on my end because all things look like it should work. So if we 
have this confirmed, we'll dig into that a bit deeper. Hey, but then um, go back two slides. Two slides. That one. Uh, yeah. Uh, so those um, out of memory killed pods. Um, I don't know if I see it on Etsy D, but I see the same thing um, when I'm doing the UPI install uh, in my lab. It, it doesn't seem to adversely affect anything because the correct pods do appear to be running. Uh, but if if that's a bug, um, I might be able to provide some additional information because it, it's happening on the UPI side as well. Yeah, it also affects OCP. Um, okay. Okay. So there is a bugzilla. There is a there is a bugzilla for that, and those spots they update the cube API schema, and oh. once they are done, they are uh, using way too much memory because we're limiting them, and they get all unkilled because they have used all of their limits. Okay. Uh, that's how it works. Really, um, it shouldn't affect anything. It can affect though. <laughs> So it's a bug which needs to be fixed, of course. Uh, yes, but since OKD is just a fork installer in MCO, the rest is the very same what we have in OCP. So every single bug which is outside of the uh, installer field builds or MCO field to put a proper file, all of that goes straight to OCP, of course. But we would like you to notify us that you found something um, and file a bug on the uh, OKD repo as well, so that we would know how, how bad things are. Any other questions? Hey, Vadim, it's Danny. I just have, have a quick one. I might be off a bit, but um, I think a while ago we were discussing about uh, moving to each CD uh, operator and use that being be that used as part of the uh, boot cube and all this kind of stuff. Is that um, been done or still on the plan or what? Uh, yeah, it is. Um, right. I barely know how it works, honestly. Right. But it's there. Well, so the 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 um, boot cube uh, basically is using the the operator nowadays, is it? Like in versus when he, we used to be like, I don't know, four zero or whatever, four one. Um. Yes. So previously, right. what we did, we asked MCO to template at CD member mm -hmm. static pods definitions. Yeah. Um. I think at CD operator is doing that for us nowadays okay that's... but before the the before the official ocp44 documentation goes out um mm -hmm. i don't think we will have a proper description of the process okay yes let's find out what's happening or any other questions how long did it take for you to set this up Um, the whole process about thirty minutes. So maximum installer will allow you to run twenty minutes of Bootstrap and forty minutes to set up the cluster. And I think it's about twenty minutes for the infrastructure. So it cannot take more than an hour and a half. It, it will fail in the middle if it takes an hour and a half. And this is set up with IPI style, right? So then that means that in the in the um, console you can do things like grow the cluster and whatnot, and everything just kind of magically happens correctly, or is it, or are there caveats oh, there yeah. too? Uh, once I run. Uh, create cluster. I'm not touching it at all. I'm just <laughs> watching it, uh, just watching it fail or or eventually succeed. And wait, how did I do that? Oh yeah. Um, and yes, due to machine API being supported here, I can scale machines and things. Um. And I won't have to provision them 
manually myself. All I and need that is, is the to... that's the cool part. Yeah. <laughs> well, any yeah. chance you any chance you might remember Vadim whether we support the machine uh, API on um, on um, uh, VMware? Because I remember in the past it was not ready for that. Um. Yes. Okay. We have okay. a machine API uh, on VMware, and I uh -huh. think there are works to make a VMware API. Okay. Um, cool. I don't think we have this in Fedora Core OS installer yet because we didn't rebase, and I'm not. I'm no, concerned about the. <laughs> but yeah, it's totally possible. Thanks. Yeah, and Neil, in the in the lab work that I've been doing, um, even though it's UPI with Libbert, if you provision just with the vert install, if you provision another uh, machine pointed to booting off of the worker ignition config, uh, the only thing you have to do is approve the CSR, and and oh, it will cool. do. Yeah, and so so I at, at before I left the for the weekend, I've got a cluster running at home um, with the usual three masters and six workers, uh, and you can just keep adding workers to it till you run out of CPUs and RAM. That's cool and terrifying, but <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, you need this as well. So um, for libvirt, what you can do is to install a cluster API. Um, what's it called? Actuator, I think. And you would be able to create machines in a similar fashion uh, using machine sets and machines. Oh, I know this. That's cool. Um, without approving a without approving CSRs because that's taken care of by machine API. And yeah, you would you would get the very same experience basically. That's nice. Doing it that is that would be very cool. All right. Um I guess that's all. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Vadim. That is awesome. That was fantastic.